What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, uh, here at the Joe Blue Sports Report, where we got our new sports desk, we're, we're making some changes this offseason to give you guys the best news on the Dallas Cowboys. One of the things I have actually dreamed about for years is actually working more and more with other YouTubers and bringing you great content. Because, you know, when it comes to the talking heads that are out there, the ESPNs and, you know, the NFL networks and stuff, it seems like they all have an agenda that is definitely contrary to what the real world is actually about. You deal with the YouTubers of the Dallas Cowboys, the Voshes, the uh, Romes, the Law Nations, and all of the other great, great YouTubers, you're actually getting real content, and they bust an ass to bring it to you. And I'm bringing up a up-and-comer here, the mailman, my man, Game Time Brian, and we're going to start doing something new. We're, we're still working on the name, and you can give us a hint on what you think as far as the name goes. You know, we, we thought about, uh, you know, let's get ready to rumble. We've thought about uh, uh, Cowboys uh, Master Bait. Okay, like you're having a master bait, you know, the, 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 you know, like debate. Okay, not the master bait you're thinking about, but coming up with the right name and stuff on here. So without further ado, let me bring in my man, Prime Time Brian. What's up, Prime Game Time? Time? Game I'm Time. I'm sorry. Damn. Sorry, man. Let me, sorry. I, I, and, sorry. and I put we the good, wrong man. camera. So what's going on, my man, we Brian? Good, man. Nah, man, we're gonna get into it. I'm doing good, man. I'm. Uh, you know, just sitting here, you're thinking of uh, you know, how I'm going to take you down. But I think that I like my argument. We definitely don't want to use the name though. Masturbate for the show. Yeah, we're not doing Masturbate. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Damn. Um, how I'm going to take you down. I, it's the Chobu Sports Masturbate discussion. <laughs> You got okay. Cowboys rumble talk. You got you know, point, counterpoint. We'll figure all that out. But yeah. the bottom line is. We have a big topic here, and it's Zeke Elliott, and we need to get into it. Well, here's the great thing that. is today is the first day of actually franchise tagging players, you know, and there's going to be some really big ones. You know, the Cowboys seem to be one of those teams that play with the franchise tag more than others, having D-Law, having Dak Prescott and things that have played on the franchise tag and so on. Um, and it's assumed that they will be franchise tagging Tony Pollard. And with that number being about $10.5 million or somewhere around in there, the question is, is Zeke Elliott, Zeke Elliott. And let's get ready to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble. And I'm going to let you start because you seem to be of the opinion that Zeke Elliott needs to go. Go ahead, Brian. Yes. My opinion is this, Mark, and to everybody out there, I love Zeke. You knew coming into the season, I said that they're going to restructure, you know, this and that. But listen, man, it it's a new era of, of football that we are in now. Um, mm -hmm. The Zeke Elliott's very few teams – have a running back that could make it after the you know the initial contract, let alone us resigning him. Um, we could argue whether it was good or not. I was all for Zeke, um, but I think you saw by the end of the year, um, he's a shell of himself. Now, can he still help a team? Yes, he can. But my opinion, you know, Zeke's you can't. I would cut him, but you cannot cut him pre June one. I mean, his dead money would be eleven million eight hundred thousand dollars pre June one, and you would only be saving a little almost. I would say a little bit shy of five million. It's four million eight hundred and sixty thousand. Okay, so I, let, let me let me let me respond to that then. Okay, so your he whole thing is okay. Wait, wait. Your whole thing is it's the money aspect. It of is it. the money. Yes. It okay, is. so you're saying best case scenario is. We cut him as a post June first, and it cost us five and a half million dollars. Five, actually five eight, yes. Five, so, almost, five so six million dollars. Well, how about this? If they know that his market value is not going to be good, is what we're hearing out there. 
Okay, the Cowboys have the advantage of knowing that there's some big name running backs that are out there. They're going to be on the market. To me, that advantage means the Cowboys actually have an opportunity here to change things. If it's already going to cost you six million dollars just to say bye at the, you know, at, at best, why not say, hey, Zeke, we love you. But we're trying to make a Super Bowl run, and how about we tear up that contract? And since we're already going to have to pay you six million to walk away, we'll give you that six million and another two million, and bring him back at eight million. Problem solved. Yeah, I mean it's it seems like it. I mean, isn't it? But but what I would say is is that Zeke Elliott has done too much for this franchise, like Tony Dorsett, who, as you remember, ended mm-hmm. up his career his career with the Denver Broncos like Emmett Smith who ended up his career with the Arizona Cardinals mm-hmm. like, um, you know, yeah, DeMarco Murray who, who went to sign a big deal with the Eagles. All three of those situations did not end up well for the team, but out of respect for Zeke and what he's done for us, I do not want to lowball the man. Okay. If he comes back, The only thing I would say is he's got to go, in my opinion. My opinion is you bring Pollard in. I don't want Pollard here long term. I do not. Mm -hmm. You see with the Super Bowl, you know, the last 12 Super Bowl winners, they've only paid their starting running back no more than $2 million a year. Okay, now that's pretty substantial numbers. that, That just shows you you need to allocate that money in other directions. I want well, to go young. Okay, let, let me rebuttal on that for a second here. Knowing how bad it has been for other players leaving and going elsewhere, if you're Zeke Elliott and you say, you know what, I've already made a boatload of money with the Cowboys, do I want to go to someplace like, you know, the Jets or, you know, uh, or someplace else? I am in with the Dallas Cowboys, you know, where, you know, I, I say here, I've got a career after football. And, you know, go here and play with this. Because here's my point right here, because it sounds like you say that he's pretty much washed and done. If we were talking about, say, Alvin Kamara, would you say get rid of Alvin Kamara? I would not, but I don't think he's where Alvin Kamara is. Really? I don't think he can do as as much as Alvin Kamara. What what, what if I said Alvin Kamara only averaged two-tenths of a yard more than Zeke Elliott and only had two touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, to Zeke Elliott's 12? Now, mind you, Zeke Elliott is fifth in the NFL in rushing touchdowns with 12. He gets the ball to goal line. He's literally our only goal line option. And again, out of respect to Zeke, I want him to go out and make as much money in his last year or two. I have a, a sneaky suspicion that wherever he goes, he ain't going to see the end of that contract. Um, but we can't have him and Tony Pollard on the field at the same you know, on this team with that kind of money. It's already out there that we're going to franchise Tony Pollard, um, and that's fine with me, uh, for a little over $10 million. So unless well, Zeke is willing to take – 600,000, like the veteran minimum, which would be a slap in the face to him. He got to go, man. Zeke, you know, go. But make you're your looking money, at buddy. it the wrong way. If you're just saying he's got to go, it's going to cost you almost $6 million. But it's going to free up money to do other things. It's going to free up. If you money end up redoing the contract money. and giving him an extra two on top of it, that's money that he's not going to find elsewhere. And here's where his role could actually evolve. Okay, because, you know, I sit here and think about the Eagles. There's so many times when the Eagles got down there on the goal line and they could not punch it in. And, you know, what they came up with was let's just put our quarterback up there and we'll just shove him forward. Okay, which will probably become, uh, you know, a a penalty. You won't be able to do that in the future. Having a guy who can be a short. He's already talking about using it. Yeah. So it's possible it could be gone. But. Having a guy who can get that one yard, that short yardage specialist, that goal line guy. Now, because, you know, people will look and say, well, he only averaged 3.8 yards per carry. And, you know, you look at Tony Pollard. Well, the difference is, is when they got down the goal line, they're not trying to punch Tony Pollard in for a one yard gain. If he's getting those 12, you know, 
first downs and 12, you know, rushing touchdowns, his numbers are going to be skewed down when he only rushes the ball 14 or 15 times in a game. So is he going to be your bell cow then? Or? No, he, that, no, but see, here's where we're, we're looking at a different offense now. We're looking at the West Coast, and guess what the West Coast actually used a lot of? Fullback. Yeah, this is where I would come right back at you and say there is no way. Zeke is the leader of that locker room. Okay, you cannot have Zeke come back to the locker room and be a part-time slash backup player making little money. That's the thing. His voice will not be heard as much if they keep him and Pollard and Pollard's the guy and Zeke's getting the goal line or, as you say, they play fullback. That's a dynamic. I don't want to put Zeke in. Uh, It's not fair to Zeke. Um, I think Zeke, it only takes one team, Mark. If you let him go out there, just like Tony Pollard, somebody's going to pay him. Do not kid yourself. And I just hope he goes to a team that's not going to bite us in the butt because I think Zeke does have some some football left, some good football. But we have other things that we need to do. We got free agents on top of free agents, and I know we can't keep them all, but we sure as heck can a lot. That kind of money – to our backfield. Let's go young. Give me B. John Robinson. If he's not out there, I want Jameer Gibbs, both of whom are explosive, way more explosive than either back on our roster. I tend to disagree with you because if it is actually true that there's a script out there and hearing you know, Zeke Elliott, or at least we heard a report that Zeke Elliott was willing to take a pay cut. He recognizes how much he loves being a Dallas Cowboy. He knows that this is where I came into the league. I've done all this damage. I want to win a Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys. And that's where I think that he would be okay. Because think about this. He went from, uh, let me look at his numbers here real quick, because he went from carrying the ball. He's got the touchdowns. I'm with you. He went from carrying the the ball like 24 times a game to now only 14 and spending time with Tony Pollard. Now, when you think about what that guy does um, as far as blocking for Dak Prescott and sacrificing um, his body. I just think it's time to turn the page. Um, He's he's had the opportunity here, and I think – the injuries are starting to mount up on the man. Um, I just don't want a lot anymore for him. I wish him well, man. I do. Well, I want to I... go young at the position, and we got a lot. We, You know what we got sitting in front of us. Um, I'm scared as hell knowing what who that we're not going to bring back. Um, you know, I think we need to sign CD. We need to sign Trayvon Diggs. We need to sign Micah Parsons soon. We're going to, like, extend Dak. Um, but here's Leighton the thing Vanderich, that I Donovan can look Wolf, at. It goes on and on. We here's, cannot give him that money. Well, here's the thing, though. You know, the Joneses are, are really good at selling us bullshit. You mm-hmm. know, when you hear Catboy, you know, we we, we can't, you know, Dak's got to leave money on the table and you know, there's not enough money to go around. You know, there's not enough slices of the pie. That is some bullshit. Okay. Yesterday, the New Orleans Saints, who were $60-some million over the cap, just took their center, who was about a $12 million hit, uh, converted. Just take they, they took an ink pen, an ink pen, and they it's said, we're going to go ahead and put a voidable year on your contract, and what we're going to do is we're going to say that part of the salary, $10 million of this, is going to be guaranteed money or signing bonus money, and now his cap number is $4 million. They created $8 million just like that. So when you say money-wise, if you've got one of the best short yardage run guy, a specialist there, and where the NFL now is going along with where you got, you know, defensive linemen that play two plays, Right. You know, it's not like Iron Man back in the day when, you know, where Emmett Smith would end up running the ball all the time and nobody else would get a chance. Now you have down and distance and things where you're going to change up. And if you make him a fullback, make him that guy who can block probably better than any uh, running back out are we, there. Are you telling me he's going to be the use check of our offense? Is he that could what you're be. You know what? You if know you're telling me, West Coast. hold on. We're if you're telling the, me, the we're going to the West Coast. But if you're telling me, you know, I got the opportunity of staying here with my brothers where I've been all my career. 
I love where it. I, I love can that. where I can be, you know, the Dallas Cowboys. There's more publicity than anywhere else, or start over and go someplace else. I only have so much time left in the NFL. I'd rather spend it with my guys doing whatever it takes. And see, Zeke Elliott is that guy. You know, you got some running backs out there that they ain't gonna block. You know, it's kind of like thought- Deion Sanders wouldn't tackle nobody. Zeke Elliott has sacrificed his body yes, and done everything possible for the team. He may not have as much as he used to, but that's one of those kind of guys that you just can't, you just don't find people that are able to do some of the and, things that he can do. And that's why I want him to go somewhere where he can go win a Super Bowl because until Catboy is not running his team, I don't have, I don't have faith that we're going to get there. So like if we're going to go that route, we can go, you know, DeMarcus Ware. DeMarcus Ware, I wanted him back. Everybody wanted We cut DeMarcus Ware. Cut him yeah. to save money. Okay. And that's what we're going to do here. And One. He, can go, he can go to Tampa with Skip Pete and have Tom Brady come out in a wheelchair out of retirement and go win another <laughs> Super Bowl. But I want to go young. I want to go explosive, especially going with the West Coast. Bring Pollard in for one year. And we cannot have Zeke be the captain when Pollard's sitting next to him making 11, 10.1 mil, and then we got a rookie stud. It's not going to be good. It's not good for Zeke. That's why I would let him go. Um, I'm going to have one, one final it. thought here because I think when you look at the numbers, and this is one of those things that the talking heads will go through and they'll say, well, Dak Prescott and the interceptions and everything else, but won't take into consideration – the guys he was throwing to, okay? There's a difference when you have an A.J. Brown and an Avante um, Smith and a Dallas Goddard, somebody's going to get open. When we got Dalton Schultz and Noah Brown and one-legged uh, Gallup and C.D. Lamb, you're yeah. going to end up having to throw into some tight windows because guys aren't getting open. And so you have to Running risk things more. And comebacks. when you think about where our offensive line was at pass blocking, for example, they were 28th in win percentage. The offensive line was not great. And it's hard to be a great running back when your offensive line is not good. And the counter to Tony Pollard getting all the yards that he did was they used him differently. He did not have right. to go into the middle of the field and get those that. tough I, yards. They I used him that. outside where, you know, his speed and everything else. But, you know, when it came time to pound, Tony Pollard's not that guy. No, he's, he's not, not that guy. And I will say that some of the problems that Zeke Elliott had were because the offensive line was not as good. I'm not going to say yeah. that he's got the burst that he can go through and break it to the house. Yeah, but could, with a I decent mean, he offensive line, play, he could Mark. still be good. He could definitely he could, he could play for another three years. There's no doubt. Mm-hmm. It's just you said it yourself. With the West Coast offense and how we're going to be getting the ball out of our hand, the one thing that Zeke Elliott did that was – really a savior to this team was his pass protection. He's not so much a threat to come out of the backfield and catch the ball, but he was always that guy to save Dax Bacon Mm -hmm. to stay back and block, whether it's the linebacker or somebody coming off the edge. With the West Coast, there's not going to be any sitting back there, pat, pat, pat. That's one more reason why we're not going to need Zeke for his pass protection because it's going to be more one, two, three, get out, one, two, three, get out. Um, I just think um, I would love to keep them all. I would love to keep them all. But this year, with all the free agents we have, maybe go out and get a couple guys like a Stefan Diggs. We're going to need every dollar. Um, you know, I would say truth be told, um, I would not bring either your running back back. But I'm hearing it's it's hard to – hold back the noise that I'm hearing from the star that they are all but positive to assign him to the franchise tag, meaning mm-hmm. Tony Pollard. And as soon as I heard that Zeke's gone, I just, right. I see it written and, and I wish him well, man. If, if it's up to me, I, I go draft two running backs and let them both go. Cause I think our defense is more important and get another weapon on the outside for Dak. So. All right. Well, there you have it. That's it, man. That, that's, that's the debate here. Whether it, we'll, we'll let you guys decide 
on what is the right thing to do. Unfortunately, these conversations like this are going on throughout all of the NFL offices right now because all the teams are scrambling, trying to figure out who are we going to keep, who are we going to try and get, and so on. And it's a tough decision because it's emotional because you have a guy that has been there and been, you know, a, a Dallas Cowboy for life and has done everything that you've asked. Unfortunately, football, you can't play and run a team with your heart. It actually has to be with your head. And it's nothing personal. It's only business. And before we get out of here, my man, Brian, tell everybody where to find you. And tell Game us. Game time, Brian. Man, everybody knows Game Time Brian on YouTube, Game Time Brian on Twitter. Uh, you could find me there. Uh, I'm also with Primetime Phil. We usually do a show on Saturday nights. We're going to be getting deep into the draft. But yeah, look me up, Game Time Brian. Game Time Brian. All right. Game I'm time. Mark Holmes with the Game man. Time the Brian. Little, baby. And we appreciate you guys watching. Leave a comment below if you liked what we were doing here and give us some ideas and suggestions for what we're going to start calling this. I think this is actually a great debate that we're having, not a masturbate. This is a great debate that we're actually having <laughs> and going through with a lot of the subjects that we have because we have so many different things, you know, like Dalton Schultz. Do we do something with him? You know, free agency. Do we go ahead and sell all out? You know, we're hearing Micah Parsons, who literally wants to bring in everybody from Jalen Ramsey to Deron Payne and so on. So there's a lot of different de decisions that need to be made. The and it's good to have. The back is going to be out there. Uh, is he? Uh, Saquon, baby. Oh, Saquon. Okay. Well, we'll see. Yeah. So to the Cowboys just basically say goodbye to both of those guys and just try and sign well, Saquon. There you go. That's another well, one out there. You know, <sighs> If you're talking about explosiveness, yeah, you know, I'm still want to go young, Mark. Just you know, just knowing what we have laid out in front of us with our free agents, mm -hmm. it has to be done. The same as the, the same thing with Tyron Smith. You know, it is what it is. Jerry comes out and says he wants to keep everybody. We can't do that. Does. We know better. We know that. But I want some new blood in here. So we'll see what happens, man. Stay tuned. Well, in the end, it doesn't matter what we want it only matters what jerry it does Jones because wants. that's what we care about. i mean you know we can't be sit back and and wait for cat boy to you break our heart we got to talk about things we want and hopefully you never know you all right brian know. maybe it'll work we're out. gonna get out of here now i will see you all guys right. soon